get a virtual parts requiem. In this video, we're going to have a look at the Hanley page. So we've got to start off by pressing Control C and get into the front gunner position. So crouching down here, we have a cockpit light, an airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the bomb release handle. And coming up, we can go over the crew controls. T is going to pick up the gun. Shift T goes over the iron sight. Mouse moves around, left mouse button will shoot. And Control C will take us to the rear gunner position. Here it's the same deal, but you can actually press Shift C and you'll move the gun from the right side of the aircraft to the left side of the aircraft and vice versa. That way you can shoot different angles depending on what's attacking you. And Control C once more, we've got a bottom gunner here and uh, his view is pretty limited, so better to leave that to the AI. Alright, back in the cockpit. So uh, we'll have a look at the cockpit itself. First of all, like we normally do. So on the left side here, you've got the mixture controls for the left and right engines. Now looking at the front panel, we've got a magnetic compass, airspeed indicator in miles per hour, altimeter and feet. Up top you've got water temperature gauges for left and right engines, clock, magneto status lights that will light up when the magnetos are on, side slip indicator, Got a switch box as well up the top. Under that is the cockpit lighting and the navigation lights. To the top right of that is going to be your fuel gauge, air pressure and magnetos for all the engines at the bottom. Looking underneath, got another magnetic compass here, a throttle and the radiator controls for both engines. Now looking at the engines themselves, this is what the water radiators look like when they're open and closed. And then you have two gauges as well. This is the oil pressure and tachometer. Alright, so starting the engines is going to be pretty easy. You can start each one individually if you like, but by default they're both going to be selected. So open the radiators, set the mixture to full on each, and just press E and the engines will get going. So now you can have a look at the pilot's notes for the Hanley page. Alright, the engines are going so we're going to taxi over and uh, give ourselves the longest takeoff roll possible. Uh, with this, there's enough airflow over the rudder to give you directional control. So you can taxi um, using the rudder with this. So just increase the power a bit. You start rolling. Yeah, about 1000 RPM will work. You can pull back the power if you like. But uh, you can just use rudder to steer on the ground. That won't be a problem. And you can also use the differential power if you like. But taxiing this is pretty straightforward. So we'll skip to the takeoff. Alright, so we're finishing our right turn here. Just going to line ourselves up, give ourselves the longest takeoff uh, distance available. And then when you're ready to go, just increase the power. Bring it up to full power now. Push the yoke forward. Get the tail off the ground a little bit. That'll let me take away the drag from that. Pulling this attitude works pretty nicely. Basically we're just trying to place that gun part on the horizon. And once we hit about 60-65 miles an hour, we'll add some back pressure. And then we get airborne. And you want to maintain this climb between 60 and 65 miles an hour. But again, because you are heavy, your climb rate is going to be uh, pretty slow. So if you are taking off from a shorter field, you will need to reduce either your fuel or your bomb load in order to be able to take off safely and avoid any obstacles that be out in front of you. So you can see you're climbing really slow and there's some trees coming up, so uh, we should be able to make it. The key is not to start pulling up even more and slowing down. 
at that point you could risk stalling the airplane and then crashing into the ground so just maintain your best climb speed and uh, hope you can make over the obstacles based on your weight so it looks like we've cleared the immediate obstacles here so going to dish these bombs and then uh, we'll climb up and rejoin the pattern so we'll just skip forward in time a little bit for that all right so we're established on a left downwind here at about a thousand feet doing uh, around about 65 miles an hour which is pretty much what we're going to be maintaining um, through this whole pattern so it's going to be pretty straightforward to land this thing but you know, these airplanes are slow so nothing ever happens really fast uh, you may want to reduce the radiator control here just to close it up that will help you keep the engine warm during the approach as you are going to have a lower uh, power setting to facilitate the descent they are looking about 1100 rpm at this point Now you're going to have the same kind of problem as in the Gotha in that the engines uh, are going to obstruct the position that you want to actually you know, use to judge when to make that turn. So once the fuel kind of disappears below the wing a little bit, uh, you're just going to have to imagine where the point is going to be. And that's the point at which you'll uh, just begin to turn. Then once the airfield comes to sight, you can reevaluate your position from there. This probably seems okay. Can't really see much anymore, so we'll make the turn now. And as we come around to the left here, take a quick peek at the airfield. You can fly a square pattern if you want. I just generally will make an adjustment to this curving pattern based on my ending point, which is going to be around about the beginning of the dirt. Going to have that reduced power setting so we can begin the descent all the while maintaining between 60 and 65 miles an hour. This all happens very slowly so it's very easy to make small adjustments in power and pitch in order to get your own point and your airspeed to where it needs to be. But again, like in the go for, got the guy up front and he's not made of glass so you can lean over to the right if you want to try and visualize where you're flying towards a little bit better it's not completely necessary if you can kind of visualize where the airplane is going so again we just keep coming down just reduce the power as needed to maintain that 60 65 miles an hour you want to keep some power in as you begin the round out once you hit that three point attitude, you can just cut it to idle. And you'll touch down, holding down the full back pressure, help you come to a stop. And then you can just go and taxi is normal to shut down. That completes this tutorial for the Hanley Beige. Until next time, remember to fly safe and check your six.